by a cost of uh, by a coin toss uh, before lunch, uh, it was determined that uh, Dr. Jeffress will speak first. He'll have eight minutes, and then he'll be followed by Jay Seculo. Pastor Jeffress. Thanks, Mark. First of all, a couple of disclaimers to begin with. Uh, I'm a great admirer of Jay Sekulow. I almost always find myself on the same side of the issue as he is, except today. Uh, secondly, I neither possess the debating skills nor the legal expertise of Jay Sekulow, and therefore this is an unfair matchup. Um, <laughs> I'm simply a pastor of a local church who has the responsibility of helping my congregation view all of life, including politics, through the lens of Scripture. I imagine the reason I was invited here today to take this position is because of some comments I made about a year ago in our pulpit in Dallas uh, that were uh, somewhat uh, erroneously reported. Some reported that I was urging my congregation not to vote for Mitt Romney. In fact, I never said that. What I said was Mitt Romney may make a great candidate, he may make a competent president, but if you choose to vote for Mitt Romney, understand you are not voting for a Christian. Mormonism is not Christianity, it is a cult religion. I then went on to point out what I felt like was the hypocrisy of some evangelical leaders, some of them my own friends, uh, who for the last eight years of the Bush administration have been telling us how important it is to have an evangelical Christian in office who reads his Bible every day, and now suddenly these same leaders are telling us that a candidate's faith really isn't that important. In fact, one of those leaders, a good friend of mine, said on national television when it came to supporting Mitt Romney, he said, well, after all, we are not electing a theologian in chief, we are electing a commander in chief. Uh, my fear is such a sudden U-turn is going to give people a case of voter whiplash. I think people have to decide and Christian leaders have to decide once and for all whether a candidate's faith is really important. And so to help put that matter in sharper perspective, I want you to imagine this scenario. Fast forward to January of 2012. Republicans are trying to decide whom they will nominate to go against President Obama. And at the top of the list are two possibilities. One is Mitt Romney, staunchly conservative, staunchly pro-life, pro-sanctity of marriage, who happens to be a Mormon. The other choice, running uh, second to him, is a popular female governor of a large state in the Union. Her name is Governor Kay Bailey Hutchison of Texas. Kay Bailey Hutchison is a devout Episcopalian who for uh, uh, matters of full disclosure sometimes worships in our church in Dallas. She is a devout Christian, she is a conservative, but her views of abortion are somewhat more liberal than that of many evangelicals. The issue confronting Christians is this, given such a choice, should we vote for an unbeliever like Romney who endorses biblical values, or should we support a professing Christian like Hutchison's whose views do not completely mesh with what evangelicals believe? I believe that Christians, first of all, ought to prefer Christians over non-Christians as their leaders. Now, by Christians, I'm not just talking about those who profess to be believers, but those whose public policies complement rather than contradict biblical values. Proverbs 29.2 says, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice, when the wicked rule, the people groan. One value of having a Christian as a leader is that he or she would hopefully uphold biblical values. And by the way, a Christian politician who says his personal faith has no influence on his public policy is either a dishonest politician or a superficial Christian. The Bible teaches very clearly that our faith ought to impact all areas of our life. But I want to, what I want to say today is the value of electing a Christian goes beyond the public policies that he or she may enact. We believe that a genuine Christian has a relationship with God, is indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, is led by the Spirit of God, and is uniquely favored by God. 
even if that genuine believer does not embrace every position we hold important, we still believe that we make a grave mistake in underestimating the value of having a Christian in office. The Old Testament is filled with examples of how God blessed the nation when godly kings ruled and how He judged the nation when ungodly kings ruled. But Robert, some might say, uh, Israel was a theocracy. You're not arguing that uh, we ought to have a theocracy, are you? Just because our manner of government, preferred manner of government has changed, uh, God's preferences haven't changed. Psalm 33, 12 still stands, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. God will bless a nation that reverences Him, and He will judge a nation that rebels against Him. And that leads me to this conclusion, which I concede is not popular even by evangelical Christians. Uh, followers of Mormonism, Hinduism, Islam, they are not worshiping the same God in a different way. We believe that they are following after false gods. And as Christians, we can look at the Bible and see very clearly that God always judges a nation who has a ruler that introduces false gods into that national life. Now, when a Christian would ever consider voting for a non-Christian like Mitt Romney, I believe before he does so, he needs to carefully consider the eternal consequences of electing a leader and legitimizing a faith that is in danger of leading people into an eternal separation from God. Now some strident evangelicals would say, well Robert, what about the sanctity of life? Isn't that what's important? Anti-abortion, pro-life? As Christians, I believe we ought to be concerned about the physical life of the unborn, but we also have a responsibility to be concerned about the eternal life of those who are already born. We have, a, have to have a consideration for people's eternal destiny. Article 6 of the Constitution prohibits government from imposing a religious test on those who would seek, uh, seek office. But the Bible gives every believer the right and the responsibility to elect godly leaders. Am I saying I would never vote for a non-Christian or even a member of a cult like Mitt Romney? I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, given the choice between two candidates, one who is an unbeliever and the other who is a believer, and both of whom embrace close to biblical values, I think we ought to choose the Christian over the non-Christian. As John Jay, America's chief justice, first chief justice of the Supreme Court said, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers, and it is the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians as our rulers. Thank you.